Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's dive into a story about a mix-up that stretches over a decade. Imagine being a teacher, dealing with the chaos of finals week, only to get a call from your old high school job at a drive-in restaurant demanding you come in for a shift. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. I haven't worked there in 19 years. Backstory. Way back in the day, my sister worked at a drive-in restaurant named after a blue hedgehog. She worked there her senior year from 2004 to 2005. I was a small thing during this time, but it doesn't have anything to do with the story that happened so many years later. My sister's now a teacher at a local high school. Like I said, my sister's a teacher. It was December when this happened. She was getting ready for finals and also getting stressed at the same time. My sister called me up and asked if I wanted to go to the mall that weekend. The weekend rolls around and we go to the mall. We stay at the mall for a couple of hours. It was around lunchtime and we stopped in the food court and got some Chinese food. My sister's phone rang and she answered it. The conversation went like this. Keep in mind it was only one-sided. Sister, hello? Uh, what? No, I think you have the wrong number. Yes, I am sister's name, but no, I cannot come. Why not? Well, one, it's Saturday and I'm a teacher. Look, I don't know how you got this number, but I don't work there. Don't call me again. I looked at my sister as she hung up and asked what that was about. Me, what was that about? Sister, that was restaurant name? You know, the one I used to work at in high school? They called saying I was on the schedule. Me, trying not to laugh. Why the hell would your name be on the schedule? You haven't been there since I was eight. We're 10 years apart. She got a job there when I was seven and left when I turned eight. Sister, I know, right? We continue without lunch, without further interruption. Later that week, my sister had contacted the manager of the restaurant she used to work at. Since the time she had been there, the restaurant had changed managers several times. She called the manager up and the conversation went like this from what she told me. Sister, hi, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. The manager comes to the phone. This is the manager. Is there a problem? Sister, yeah, I was wondering, why do you still have my information from over 19 years ago? Manager, excuse me? Sister, well, you called me on Saturday morning saying I had to come in. Look, I just wanted to tell you that the information is no longer valid. I'm 36 years old. I don't live in hometown anymore. I haven't lived there since I was 18. I'm a teacher. I want you to throw that information away, okay? Manager, well, your name is sister's name, right? Look, I have your information right here. Sister, beyond done with the manager, sir, I'm trying to be nice. Look at the address. That is not my home address. I haven't lived there since I was 20. My home address, gives her home address, Manager, well, I don't know what to tell you. I have your information right here. If you don't come in, I'm going to fire you. This has been going on long enough. Sister, I don't care. Just get rid of my information. She hung up after that. My sister didn't hear back from the manager about a few weeks and told her that he was sorry there was a huge mix-up. When my sister left, restaurant name in 2005, they were switching over to computers for their recording keeping and somehow her information was never deleted and was kept in the computer for a good decade. He didn't know how her information came again after so many years. He just assumed she was the new girl he hired who had a similar last name to hers, but she only showed up a couple of times to work. After that, she never heard anything from that manager, but she said that she got war flashbacks from her time at restaurant name and vowed to never go back there again. I wonder if the reason the new girl didn't show up is they weren't putting her name on the roster. They were putting their sisters. And they were calling sister, so she never knew. And our second story. Karen asks if anyone else on the wait list is as entitled as her. I work at a vet clinic. Since COVID, when people adopted loads of pets, appointment wait times have exploded industry-wide. My clinic also has the distinction of being one of the only practices that sees exotic pets, anything not cat or dog, like birds, reptiles, and rodents, within a 60-mile radius, so our appointment wait time reflects that level of demand. 
Some of our clients who've been with us since before the new millennium haven't been able to get used to the new wait times, and things were just starting to get a bit better in the last few months. But then, as summer got closer, everyone wanted to get dog and cat vaccines updated so they can board and travel with pets for vacation. This interaction happened last week. Me. Thank you for calling clinic. How may I help you? Karen. I need to get my dog in for vaccines. I'm leaving the state next week and need the certificate to cross state lines. Me. Looks up her account. Our vaccine appointments are actually out about three weeks right now, but lucky for you, your dog also needs an annual exam with a doctor. Exam appointments are only out a little over a week, and we can do vaccines at the same time. What day are you leaving? K. Wednesday morning? Me. Oh, I don't have anything till Friday. K. It takes all of three seconds to inject my dog with the vaccine. Can't you just do it? Me. Ma'am, your dog does also need an annual checkup with the vet, which is a full physical that we legally have to do in order to administer vaccines. Also, we have a wait list right now for cancellations, so there's about 20 people all waiting for appointments for simple injections. K. Are all of those people going out of state on Wednesday? Me. Ma'am, we all have our own personal emergencies and needs and life stories. I can tell you most of the patients on our wait list are suffering horrible seasonal allergies and need a shot to stop scratching themselves bleeding. We just have limited time and staff to get everyone in. K. Does coworker still work there? Me. She does. She just got off shift right now. Coworker would not have pulled Karen any strings, which I knew, but she confirmed for me when I told her about it the next day. K. And what about name of someone else who has never worked here? Me. No one's ever been here by that name. K. No, I know it was name. She has reddish hair. Me. Ma'am, I'm the only redhead who works here. Do you mean my name? Which could be close to what she said if her memory was bad. K. No, no, definitely not. I just wanted to see how much turnover there had been since last time I was there. Oh, well, put me on the cancellation list. I'm sure other clinic will act like they actually want my business, though, so don't be surprised if you get a request to transfer my records. Me, knowing we'll never call waitlist people unless they're on the schedule for a future appointment, but Karen's already hanging up. Okay, bye. We're consistently overbooked to the point of having to refer good clients who don't treat us like crap to emergency vets. We had to stop taking new clients for about six months. We're fine weeding out the Karens from our client roster. Also, I'm still convinced she was remembering me as a nice employee before and just getting my name wrong, which I find hilarious. You're totally right, Karen. This place has definitely gone downhill ever since they replaced me with me. Well, hopefully they fire current you and hire back previous you, so things go back to how they were. And our last story. Invasion of the HOA Lawyers. I'm not a member anymore. Well, let me tell you a story that's been a bit of a wild ride all about this piece of land I own but don't live on. Too pricey for my blood these days, if you can believe it. This whole mess didn't unfold in the States, but I'll keep it in dollars to make it easy for y'all to follow. So way back when, this land of mine was part of a big old farm. I snagged it about 30 years ago, back when there wasn't much around but dirt roads and dreams. I had big plans for farming, but life, as it often does, had other plans. Fast forward a bit, and some of the landowners around decided to spruce up the place, turning it into a proper suburb with all the trimmings, roads, water, you name it. They even offered to build me a house on the cheap, if enough of us signed on. I sold half my land to one of these neighbors, used that money plus a loan to build a nice big house and live there happily for a few years. After my mom passed, I moved out and started renting the place. Around that time, these neighbors started yapping about forming an HOA, but I wanted no part of it. A couple of years later, though, they came knocking, wanting to use my land for the main entrance to their fancy gated community. We struck a deal, they'd take care of the lawn, and I'd get a little cash every month. It was a sweet arrangement. Everything was peachy until someone decided to terrorize my tenant's daughter by making a ruckus and firing off a gun near her window. The HOA folks, all ruffled, came to me with a proposition, join their club, skirt the fees, and they'd build a wall around the whole neighborhood. Sounded like a no-brainer. So I agreed. But then, just as the ink dried on that wall, the HOA started nitpicking about my tenant's dogs barking. Turned out they decided to yank my exemptions and hit me with fees and fines for all sorts of nonsense. That's when I got a bee in my bonnet. 
The HOA president, who'd once been my neighbor, tried to whine and dine me into submission, but I wasn't having any of it. Their lawyer, thinking they still had a leg to stand on, soon found out they were standing in quicksand. I laid out a new deal. All right, let's dive a bit deeper into the heart of this Texas-sized tangle, focusing on the revenge part, where things really start to heat up like a July afternoon in Austin. So there I was, stewing over the HOA's high-handedness, thinking about how they done scared my tenant's daughter and then tried to wrangle me into their little empire with promises as empty as a politician's apologies. But then, turning on a dime, they hit me with demands and fines like I was their personal ATM. Well, that got my gears grinding, and I decided it was high time for a little payback, Texas style. First off, I poured over that contract they had me sign, every word, every comma, like a prospector sifting for gold. And wouldn't you know it, I struck it rich when I found they'd goofed up on the property numbers. They were laying claim to a piece of land for their fancy gate that, legally speaking, they had no right to. That piece of paper they thought had me hogtied turned out to be as useless as a screen door on a submarine. I wasted no time letting them know their security setup was squatting in my land illegally. You should have seen the look on their faces. It was like I told them their prized steer was a cow. The HOA president, my once friendly neighbor who'd turned as sour as weak old buttermilk, tried smoothing, but I was done being the nice guy. I was playing hardball now. Then came the negotiations, or what they thought would be me rolling over. They didn't know I had an ace up my sleeve. I laid out my terms for a new easement deal, and let me tell you, it was as lopsided as a one-legged chicken. I asked for everything but the moon, figuring I'd at least get the stars. Higher monthly payments, a hefty cancellation fee, and a clause that'd make them pay my legal fees if as much as a tumbleweed blew across our dispute. It was a masterpiece of spite, dressed up as a contract. The clock was ticking, their backs were against the wall, and they had no choice but to sign my wildly unfair contract. The HOA president, bless his heart, didn't even read it through. He just signed it, thinking he could lawyer his way out of any corner. But this wasn't just any R. It was a corner I'd built especially for him. When the reality of what they'd signed dawned on them, like the morning sun revealing the aftermath of a tornado, they were fit to be tied. But there was nothing they could do. The contract was iron-clawed, and every attempt to wriggle out of it just tightened the noose. And me? I got everything I wanted, and then some. The HOA was at my mercy, paying me monthly and dancing to my tune, all because they underestimated the guy with the land they needed. It wasn't just revenge, it was a lesson in humility for them, and a reminder to me that sometimes being the stubborn Texan pays off. Fast forward, the former president of the HOA packs up and leaves for some backwoods trailer park with his tail between his legs after the HOA sues him for a fortune because of his ineptitude. Turns out he was annoying me the whole time, but I still can't figure out why. A bull like that on every HOA with Karen? And I think our world would be a little bit better for all of us. Except for Karen. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.